Hi everyone and welcome. It's Steve Johnson here from Forager and in this week's video I'm joined by Alex Shevelev to talk about the Australian economy and a bit of news out around our portfolio this week. Hi Alex. Hi Steve. Hello everyone. Motorcycle Holdings is one of the newer investments in the portfolio and, and one that we've uh, picked up through this latest crisis. Back in March, its share price had fallen from around $2 to as low as 60 cents. Uh, this week, the company came out and said its second half EBITDA, a rough, broad measure of profitability, is going to be 150% higher than it was in the second half. So a business that people were worrying about going broke in the depths of the crisis is actually posting some profit numbers that we haven't seen for quite a while. Alex, what's going on? So there's been a few uh, uh, unfortunate things to hit this business early on in the crisis, and then a few positive uh, positives from government stimulus and spending that have come through more recently. So the business had a terrible month in April, very few people out and about buying motorcycles and motorcycle accessories, but then uh, the situation changed quite rapidly. So the government uh, allowed the withdrawal of $10,000 uh, out of super, and that has allowed a few people to go and spend that money on a new motorcycle. You pair that with a little bit of uh, hesitation around public transport, a motorcycle being a pretty useful means of personal transportation. And we've got a pretty dramatic improvement there. On top of that, you've got rain and a reasonably large um, exposure to ag in certain parts of their product set and very helpful for the cost base of the company, JobKeeper, which has allowed them to subsidize the payments to their own staff. They said on the call with investors last night that the cash balance has gone from $5 million to $35 million over the past six weeks and literally up every day. Look, obviously there's a stimulus related component to this. Uh, some people concerned across a lot of businesses that you're just getting demand brought forward rather than any sustainable increase in demand. How do you think about valuing a business like this in an environment so volatile? I think one important thing with motorcycle holdings to start off with is that it was a relatively highly leveraged business. It had undertaken some acquisitions uh, and the business was carrying a fair amount of debt going into this situation. Now, whether this is a one-off situation or whether this bump is gonna be a little bit more long lasting, the business has now paid off quite a significant amount of debt. Uh, partially that is through uh, inventory being run down a lot of used motorcycles being sold part of it will need to be uh, replaced, but the debt situation is now a lot more comfortable than it was. This is not gonna be a clean period. There is gonna be a, a 12, 18 month period here where results are gonna be very messy. You're gonna have JobKeeper on the one hand, uh, low levels of activity and then very high levels of activity. On the other hand, uh, a second rung of super um, $10,000 payments still available to people should they wish to use them after June 30. So it's going to be a messy period. However, the starting point here was a reasonably depressed motorcycle market. So to the extent that this stimulates demand shorter term, that's helpful and it should help to bring into focus motorcycles as a form of transportation, as a form of recreation and allow the business to sell more of those bikes and accessories importantly in future. And the company has done a number of acquisitions while the market was depressed, signed a few distribution deals that, that might be important. I mean, where, where do you think it comes out of this relative to, say, 2019 earnings before COVID hit? Uh, I think the business overall has been uh, taking on quite a lot of interesting businesses, whether that's by acquisition, they bought two uh, reasonably recently, or whether that's uh, taking on a distributorship. In this case, they've taken on Indian, which is a motorcycle brand that is similar to Harley Davidson. Now, importantly, the acquisitions didn't cost them very much and they're able to get in there and run those more effectively within a larger business uh, than the prior owners of those businesses. And in Indian, those motorcycles are going into existing, uh, existing locations and not increasing the cost base too dramatically. So through both of those, they've strengthened their position. And I think in future, whether that's by acquisitions or organically 
receiving more of that new and used bike volume, they'll continue to increase their share of the Australian uh, motorcycle sales market. Yeah, this is a founder-led company and uh, the, the founder was on the call last night and asked about acquisitions and he said, we buy acquisitions when the market, we buy other companies when the market is terrible and we're in a recession and right now things are booming. So uh, don't expect to see any acquisitions soon. And I think that mentality is a really good one. Now, look, I've been arguing for some months that these retailers that qualified for JobKeeper and then where sales have recovered are going to be making very, very high profit margins and surprise people with their results. Are there broader implications here for the economy and for reporting season coming up? Absolutely. The one sure thing is it's going to be a very messy set of results for the second half of the year because we know there'll be various changes in demand and also various changes to the cost base. Uh, we have seen quite a few companies, as you suggest, actually perform quite well during this period, whether that's a retailer having more of an online sales focus or, as you've seen with motorcycle, just a general increase in demand and at the same time receiving effectively a subsidy for their labor costs. That's obviously not a situation that can continue. We'll go on until September. After that, the companies will need to make a call. Do we establish uh, a new cost base that is lower because uh, JobKeeper is no longer there? Or do we continue with the current cost base? Hopefully demand has returned by that point or we expect it to return in short order. Yeah, a lot of economists were concerned about all of this government stimulus just being saved by people that they'd use it to repay their mortgages. So worried about jobs that they want to build up their cash in the bank. And, and I think that theory can clearly be thrown out the window. Uh, we're seeing people spend on motorbikes and cars and retail and you can worry about the long-term consequences of that. But I think that is the reason that the stimulus was there and it is working quite well. And hopefully like motorcycle holdings, a lot of these businesses are able to use those sales to uh, set themselves up with stronger balance sheets and the ability to ride out the uncertainty over the couple next couple of years. Now, like you said, I think it's going to be 12 or 18 months in the case of businesses like this before investors can get any clarity about what the long-term earnings power looks like. Uh, thanks for that, Alex. It's hard to convince people to buy a motorcycle retailer when Afterpay shares double every month, but we think we've been able to add a pretty good little business to the portfolio here. Despite the share price tripling over the past couple of months, it's still a very undemanding multiple of what we think the long-term earnings can be and hopefully a return to dividends with the full year results. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week.